I'm Dr. Rick Arthur. I'm Equine Medical Director in California at UC Davis. I'm assigned full-time to the California Horse Racing Board. Uh, I practice in the Southern California Thoroughbred Circuit for over 30 years and uh, am a member of TOBA and the Jockey Club. A horse administered Lasix will run faster than a horse that is not administered Lasix. That's very well proven. The question is why? Is it because they're losing 20 some pounds of weight? Is it because their TCO2 is increased, which we know is a performance enhancing uh, change in, in the horse due to, a, in this case, a hypochloremia and a depletion of the chloride in the blood from the Lasix? Uh, we also know Lasix decreases the amount of blood from the IPH. And it also has a profound direct effect on the pulmonary vasculature. So which of those factors are more important? It'd be very interesting to see how horsemen would respond that if you had Lasix, you had to carry an extra 20, 20 to 25 pounds. They may not think that that bleeding was as important under that particular circumstance. But yes, there's no questions that Lasix is a performance enhancer. Anybody that questions that should read Diane Gross's uh, paper in the Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association from 1999. Uh, they can find it on PubMed and uh, very, very uh, easy to find. Horses race around the world without Lasix and race very well. So horses can race in the U.S. without Lasix and be competitive. They can't be competitive if they aren't on Lasix and other horses are on Lasix for obvious reason. But uh, places in the world where their horses race on Lasix, uh, those horses are every bit as healthy as the horses here in the U.S. So yes, horses can race without Lasix. But we've raised a generation of horsemen that don't know how to, to race horses or train horses any other way. And there's no question that EIPH bleeding is a very frustrating condition for horsemen to deal with. I know that, I've practiced for 30 years, and uh, in fact, I'm a co-author of the paper that coined the term exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhage, so I know the problem very well. Well, the uh, Race Day Medication Summit that the uh, NTRA, uh, the RMTC, and the AAEP put together brought over trainers from around the world, uh, veterinarians from around the world, to explain how they do it in those jurisdictions and uh, handle horses without Lasix. Uh, you just manage them a little differently, you train them a little differently, and there's really some advantages. Uh, in the U.S., if a horse bleeds, you just give them a better, bigger Lasix shot a week later and you don't miss that next work. In uh, other jurisdictions, you may give that horse a little bit more time between races. And I'm not entirely sure the time isn't better than just another shot of Lasix. Drugs in any sport today uh, compromises the integrity of that sport. Uh, that's something I think horse racing is going to have to deal with in the future. If we are going to survive as a sport, we're going to have to recognize what our customers want. Our customers want integrity, and integrity means drug-free. If you go to a place like Hong Kong, where integrity is key to their entire product, that's one of the reasons they are so successful and one of the reasons they have very restrictive medication policies. But today, the way that medication is used today in horse racing is just not going to be tolerated by the public. And if they knew how much medication is actually being used on top of the race day Lasix, on top of the adjuncts, on top of the butte that they know about, I think they would be rather shocked.